So everybody put your hands together and welcome all the way from the West Coast. It is Lady Coco. So I have, thank, you, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. So I get, you know what, Linda, I'm going to let you defer, go on and, and I'm going to defer to you because I'm always asking the first set of questions to get stuff started. I want okay. you to be starting something. Start something, girl. Thank Start you. Something. I appreciate that because my question all week once I knew she was coming on here is where did the name Lady Coco come from? Because it's not from your first name. No. So it's too no. smooth. I knew somebody was going to, and, and really the story ain't as smooth and cool as you think. But what that's happened? all right. The name is. You know, when I learned that I was going to become a grandmother, I was way too young to be Nana, grandma. I know that's right. That was not happening. Okay. So my girlfriend and I were literally walking in the mall trying to think what we going to, what the baby going to call me. And uh, she said, well, the baby can call Mike a uh, pop. And uh, I just said, hey, Coco pop. And so Coco stuck. So then when I went into the whole music thing, you know, I couldn't just be Coco because there's some other Cocos out there. Yes. So yes. I went with Lady Coco and I just kind of liked the way it felt. And it's been rolling with me ever since. But that is cool. And that's smooth to me. What about you, Kim? I like that. Man, look, that mocha mama ain't even playing with us right now. Okay. <laughs> That she, is. She, she she smooth with it and, and, and it fits it's like I, if you wouldn't have told me that story i probably would have never questioned that your name wasn't coco I i'd have figured there was up, something huh? in something in there and um and it goes oh, with the brown liquor okay right and, and and anything else would have been like oh i was like well maybe she just really likes coconut so that that would be <laughs> Not at you all. know that you know unless you you know like you that that auntie mama that makes that great uh cake the, with the with the pineapple filling in between the layers and the coconut all on top like oh, my aunt used yeah, to make yeah, yeah. Uh, you know <laughs> uh, that 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 would be about the best thing i give you so but obviously um you you smoothing out them hits and and, and you pull it from a nice uh a nice catalog of things to kind of keep yourself kind of fresh and current so yes. what what goes into your choices of songs and and i don't mean this as an ageism question because i'm sure you have an audience that might be a little bit geared older but you're kind of introducing them to them like what i say current stuff that's a little right. bit more hip and not to say that my seasoned veterans out there y'all don't touch a whole lot of stuff and get into some things because we know y'all get into some trouble we know <laughs> well you know but you know musically wise you know it, it, certain genres have certain tastes and what they like so when yeah. you when i see you doing a cover of daniel caesar and my girl her this is what i'm wondering what makes you pick what makes you go back and kind of find some things that would kind of bridge that gap? You know what? I look for music that speaks to me. If I, if like, if I can't feel it, I can't sing it. Okay. You know, I don't care how beautiful the song is. If it's not saying something to me, it's not happening. And so I've taken a pass on a lot of songs because of that. But when I hear a song and it, uh, grabs me I, I you know I stop and I take notice to the lyrics and I'm like oh and then I think about how would that make my audience feel and then I talk to the guys and you know get their input and then that's kind of what determines what goes in or stays out of a playlist when we're putting uh, songs together and uh, even when I write songs that comes out of you know my experience somebody might say something and I'm like oh there's a there's a song title like we did when we talked the other day and you said something about get to it to get through it. That song is happening. That song is going to be on my. On oh, my yeah. The blue, uh, our blue song. Yes. <laughs> get through it to get to it. Yeah. But that was interesting yeah. what um, Kim just said. Um, and following up, you said that your parents used to sing blues they would sing blues at the drop of a hat they're making up songs and so forth so how much blues do you sing and so far as your songs do you write the majority of them uh you know i do a little you know a few blues songs because just depending on on like the venue where I'm at sometimes you you've got to roll in with at least one so they can wave their hankies you know while you sing it so <laughs> what's funny is my parents yeah they 
man, if I had recorded the stuff that they were singing on the front porch on Friday night while my mom's was frying fish in the kitchen, my dad was on the porch playing his guitar, and she'd just walk out and drop a verse and then hey. walk back in and go finish frying the fish. I had no <laughs> appreciation. Like party. I wish I could have been at. <laughs> man, Friday nights was happening at the house in, 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 in Central California. Uh, but I had no appreciation for the blues because I was too young. Just a little background on this song. Uh, I wrote it with the, I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of the producer songwriter Preston Glass. Preston I think I have, is, yes. Preston is the one who put Kenny G on the map. Preston gotcha. produced duo tones okay. for Kenny G, which is the song that put him on the map. Uh, Preston has written for Whitney Houston. He's written for Earth, Wind, and Fire. He's written for Thelma Houston. He's written for George Benson. He's written for Aretha. He's, he's the one who wrote Who's Zooming Who. Oh, got gotcha. you. Okay. So, gotcha. and, he's, and he's our brother in the faith, too. So. Actually, we had somebody on, the, 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 our, our guys from uh, Woody. I believe they, those guys mentioned that brother's name, too, because I believe that's who they're working with also, uh, if you guys remember. So I hope I'm right about that in my uh, sometimes ain't kicking in right now. But yes, Preston Glass. Yes. Gotcha. So Preston and I uh, wrote, the, he wrote the music. And I wrote the words and, you know, we just kind of mash it up. But don't get mad at me for this song, because sometimes, you know, the Bible tells you not to be a busybody. Mm -hmm. But sometimes yeah. some of y'all didn't get the memo. So first, the first Thessalonians 411, yeah. make it your own. So yes. sometimes you have to tell people to stay in your lane. OK, is that the name of the song? So This song is called <laughs> Stay in Your Lane. <laughs> The chorus, if you want to sing the chorus in your house, the chorus is stay in your lane. I'll stay in mine. Mind each other's own business and we'll be just fine. Amen. Okay. So if y'all remember that and you want to jam with it, <laughs> I dedicate this song to DJ Raj because Will Downing is who you hear on the background vocals of this song. He actually did background vocals for me as a favor. Ooh, la, la, and la. Yeah, hello. And Ross, yeah, was, we were going to talk like, about that coming up soon, so I'm glad you brought yeah. it up. So, girl, come on, get through this song so we can stargaze with you when you come back. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Raj, you're going to hear your voice in this song, uh -oh. okay? <laughs> yes, All right, y'all, yes, remember, stay in your lane, I'll stay in mine, mind each other's own business, and we'll be just fine. All right, here it come. It's Lady Coco with <laughs> Stay in Your Lane. Y'all hear it all right? Ain't nothing mellow about this. Shut up, 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 shut up